Hey, good morning, friends. This is the spoken word, poetry of the purpose. This is the apple of his eye seven. We are doing extreme whimsical whimsy today. This is lots of fun. Hope you enjoy this. I, When the Holy Spirit hits me like this, I always rejoice. I can see his humor and his just joy. The joy of the Holy Spirit is amazing. <laughs> I'm tired today. <laughs> But I am compelled by a mighty hand to do this. This in the book of Jonah. So if I fall asleep once or several times, do not hold it against me. I'm just tired. Lots going on in our lives. Everything's changing. And I'm not sleeping as much as I should have. Should probably. But I am just bushed. So I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm just stating the facts. So if you see me fall asleep, just laugh and enjoy it. So that's Josh without editing. And Josh, don't do editing. Don't believe in it. Not, I don't want us to put out a slick product. I want to put out a village idiot product because I'm a village idiot for Christ. So here we go. To which of the angels did God ever say, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit, inherit, inherit salvation? I can't read either. Hebrews 1, 13 and 14. And here we go. Enjoy the ride, kids, because this is going to be a good ride. Ministering spirit sent. Angel Bob is on deck. He's prepared now his heart, his assignment in hand. He's ready to start. He just waits for the word that it's time now to go, to be sent to the heirs and to serve these these he knows. For he knows them so well, for Paul brags a lot about all his children. He's been put on the spot, stopped in mid-sentence or in the middle of a thought, as Paul weaves the tale with all the love he's been caught. And caught's the right word, for he's a prisoner of love. And who would have thought it about our Father above. Who'd have believed that he'd be addicted to the sons with a measure, with a love beyond measure? Yes, to all of these ones. Of course, it was manifest on the cross with the death of the Christ, Paul doing everything and paying any price. And yet here we are, him stuck once again as Paul rambles on about those born again. These children so loved, yes, with a love beyond measure. And it's so evident to all that in these, Paul takes so much pleasure. But as, but as a ministering spirit, he just waits till he's sent with such joy now in service in the way his eternity will be spent. Man, I love, love, love this one today. Man, I love, I just, I love the, the reality, the, the joy, the re, the realness, the, you know, the, 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 the just the, that God really is real. And when I get this kind of stuff from the Holy Spirit, it just blesses my socks off because people think about God in a religious way and the Holy Spirit, they don't even know what to think about. It's the mystery of the Trinity is the Spirit. We all understand the Father and Son, but who's the Spirit? And so I love when he does this kind of stuff. It's his humor. It's it's just so much fun. So let's just get into this. Again, we'll read the, the thing again. To which the angels to God, I would say, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool. Again, reference to Christ. He never told the angels that they, you know, that they would uh, make his enemies uh, their footstool, uh, his footstool. So and they are, and the angels are ministering spirits sent to those who will inherit salvation. So they go ahead of us, prepare good works for us to do. Um, they, um, they, they, uh, they just, they, they're, they're guarding over us, watching over us and doing, and what, and they are serving. We are the heirs of salvation. You and I, if we know Jesus Christ, we're an heir, we're a co-heir with Christ, a joint heir with Christ, we're heirs of salvation. And they serve us behind the scenes. We never see it. And my great, one of my great joys in eternity is to thank each of them individually. When I, because we're going to judge angels, Paul said, and it's going to be like a judgment seat of Christ kind of judgment. We're going to, we're going to judge them for their work. And again, I don't think it's going to be a hard judgment because I don't think, I think these guys serve so completely selflessly, but they're going to be rewarded for their service in the way we are. And so aren't you, aren't you thankful? that God thought enough of you to create an entire race of beings called ministering spirits who would, but I call them my brothers. I'll be honest with you. I love them with a love because I love the service. They serve, they have no ego. They're, they have no self. They're just, they're just bent on serving. They're totally, completely addicted to serving. And I love that about them. And I, when I get up to heaven, I want to be like, these guys are my example. You know, not that I'm going to become an angel. People don't become angels. That's one of the great misconceptions. But I'm, I'm bent on their example of service. They serve so well. Well, again, the two-thirds that are left. The first third, not so much. But 
the first, the last two thirds that are left after the great rebellion in heaven. Yeah. But I love them. And I love them with a love that's passionate. And it, and it, I want to hug each of them. I mean, I'm going to hug them. I'm, I'm going to give them a death hold, you know, just <laughs> hug them tight because I love them, man. And if you haven't figured that out, yeah, I love angels. And so let's just jump right in here. I just, I mean, I don't worship them. We don't worship angels. John made that mistake twice in the book of Revelation when he was writing it. They're, 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 you know, they are fellow servants with us, you know, and with, with our brothers, the prophets. They, they serve with us, the kingdom. And so, but they have their own story and they serve us. But I would love to be able to help have them recline and us serve them. I just love that. I just want to bless them so much. And so here we go. Angel Bob is on deck. I love it. Anything to do with names, I always use Bob. If you didn't figure that out, I used it. If it's, a, if it's a generic thing, I always go Bob. So this is Angel Bob. We're having fun with this. So remember, this is fun. This is cool. Angel Bob is on deck. He's prepared now his heart. His assignment is in hand. He's ready to start. So it's like the picture in my mind is is like baseball players, you know, they're on deck. They they you know their their number is up next and they're the next one up to bat and they're going. They're ready. They're swinging the bat around. They're they're limbering up. They're getting ready. So here's Angel Bob on deck. He's ready. He's ready for his assignment. He's got his assignment. He's just waiting for the word. Time to go, man. Go serve. And he's just he's just all excited because he's the next one up, man. He's ready to go. He's just he just waits for the word. And I put the word in capital as the word is from the Father. Waits for the word. Okay, it's time to go. By my order, by I ordain it. Now go. And so for, he waits for the he waits for the word that it's time now to go to be sent to the heirs to, to these uh, to the serve these he knows for he knows them so well for Paul brags a lot about all his children he's been put on but I love this part here about Paul bragging about God I use Paul a lot in this a very very I want a very very family thing in this this is that was very important in this I was impressed to keep putting Paul in there instead of God I mean, he's in there God is in there too but Paul was really important today for he. He knows them so well for Paul brags a lot. You know, I got to believe that Paul brags, uh, brags about us, that Paul talks about us all the time. You know, look at what my boy did over there. Look at what my daughter did over there. You know, man, he's, you know, these are the ones that have chosen to love me. These are the ones who love me because of a free will, because of their choice. And, I, and he just, he's just in awe of us. He, how much he, how much, how much, I mean, I think God sometimes is in awe of the love he feels for us, but he's also in awe of the love he, that we feel for him because so few on the earth love him back. And he has so much unrequited love, poor God. He loves everything perfectly. This love moves out of him. I saw this so clearly. It's like this force, this power of love is just moving through the universe, touching everything. His love is touching everything. And once in a while, it touches someone. They look back and send love right back to him. You, when you love on God, when you tell him how much you love him, that's you sending love. He's always loving on you. He's always blessing you and loving you. But when you say, I love you, Paul, I love you, God. Good morning. I love you. How are you today? I asked God the question the other day. I said, what do you think about yourself? And the answer I got was this. I think and know that I'm loved. And if men would love me, or if men would love me, that all they would experience is my love. Yet they refuse. Because it was an interesting, I was driving to the restaurant to work and I was thinking, you know, it just came to mind, I would be cool to ask God a very personal question. What do you think about yourself? That's something you talk to your friend, man, what do you think about yourself? What do you think about what's going on here? And it just came to me, ask God, what do you think about yourself, God? You know, what would you say about yourself? What do you think about it? And I got yesterday morning, it was like, I think and know that I'm love. And if men would love me, all they'd see is my love, but they refuse. And just stamped in my mind and in my heart. And that's the truth. He thinks and knows that he's love. He is love. And if people would just love him back, all they would ever experience is his love. Even his chastisement is done in love. And so, but like, so God, I believe, is bragging us on us much. And so let's continue on here. For he knows them so well, Paul's, for Paul brags a lot of battles show. He's been put on spot. Stop. This is Angel Bob. He stopped in mid-sentence or in the middle of a thought as Paul weaves the tale with all the love he's been caught. Paul, our God, is caught up. God so loved the world. God, first, um, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. That means for God so loved people. The world there means people. For God so loved people that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him would not perish but have eternal life. He 
loves us so much. And he's caught up. I think God, if God's an, an, an addict of anything, if God could be addicted to anything, it would be his children. He's caught up. In, he's caught in this love for us that he himself created. It's so cool. It's a self-created love. He's a self-creating God, and it's a self-created love for us. He first loved us so that we could love him back. We'd understand how to love him and love him back. And so, but he's caught up in this love. It's so beautiful. This, this, is, this is so beautiful today. And caught's the right word, for he's a prisoner of love. In his heart, God is a prisoner of love. He loves you that much. He's a prisoner of his love for you. And who would have thought, who would have thought it about our Father above? Who'd have, who'd have believed that he's addicted to the sons with a love beyond measure? Yes, to all these ones, all this, to all of these ones. He's addicted to us, man. And beyond measure, beyond measure. Of course, it was manifest on the cross. Here we go. We always come back to Jesus. It's always, whenever possible, to the blood. Blood didn't come in this poem, but we always come back to the cross of the blood wherever we can. Of course, it was manifest on the cross with the death of the Christ, Paul doing everything and paying every price. If any price, he paid the ultimate price for his children with the death of his firstborn, the death of his only begotten, the death of the only one ever wrought through the Holy Spirit instead of a man. He paid any price for us. And yet, <laughs> here we go. And yet here we are, him stuck once again while Paul rambles out about those born again. <laughs> I love, I just love the whimsical nature of this poem. You see, Bob's just listening and going on. He's got his assignment and he's ready to go. Yet he's sitting there just listening with love as Paul goes on and on and on about the born again ones. Uh, these children so love, yes, with a love beyond measure, that it's so evident to all that in these Pa takes so much pleasure. Man, he loves us with a love beyond measure. And all things were created for his good pleasure. You and I were created for Pa's good pleasure. The angel class was created for Pa's good pleasure. And he takes an amazing amount of pleasure in all of us. It's, it's so mind-blowing. And then the final stanza. But as a ministering spirit, he just waits till he's sent with such joy now in service in the ways eternity will be spent. In other words, he's waiting to be sent again. But he has such joy in the service in his service to men, in his servant to the heirs of salvation. And he's rejoicing the fact that his entire eternity will be spent in this service. Angels will serve forever. They are ministering spirits that will serve us forever. And we'll be able to love back on them. We're gonna we're gonna coexist with them, talk to them, have a personal relationship. I didn't spend I intend to have a personal relationship with all these guys. Absolutely, man. I, anything I can share with them, anything I can do for them, any way I can serve them back and love them back the way they've loved me. But they're going to spend, their eternity is set. They're going to spend eternity with us, serving us and loving us. And, and it's just, it, it go, I, if I could share my, if I could share my humanity with them, if I could help them to feel how I feel. I would love that. When I get up there, I want to share myself. The way they share themselves with us, I want to share myself with them is with equal measure. I want to, everything inside of me, I want to give back to them because they've given. Everything inside of them has, give, has been given to us. We're so blessed, man. Think about what I'm saying here. The love of God is so profound. He creates all of these ones to serve each other. This is a mutual love, a mutual love. Uh, a mutually beneficial relationship between us and them. And it's just love upon love upon love upon love upon love. The kingdom of God is based on his love. Can't you see them? Why would he create ministering spirits unless it was about love? You know, I mean, he, he didn't have to make angels, but he did. And they have joy in their service. They, 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 they are in wonder of us. They, um, you know, they, uh, they long to look into these things as it says in Hebrews or James or something, you know, they, they look at us with wonder, like, wow, you guys are the kids. They're in awe. And I just, it blows you away how real this all is, how much love is real, how the love is so real. And everything contingent is contingent on it and it hinges on it and is powered by it. And you see it right here, powered by his love. Everything is powered by the love of God. I will say this and preach this and teach this to the day I die. 
The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Love is the thing. And it's perfectly evident with the angels and how much... And I think, and I, I don't believe they're emotionless creatures. I believe they're full of the love of God, filled up with his love. They're as passionate about us as probably God is about us. They love us so much. They serve us so well. So I know I'm rambling, 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 but I want you to get this. I want you to see your brothers correctly. These are my brothers. I call my family my family, you know, other co my co-heirs of salvation. But these cats are special to me. They're my brothers. Again, no worship here, just an admiration, a respect for their service. And and just how selfless that. I wish I had as little self. I wish I had the, the same kind of ego. I wish I had no ego at all like these guys do. I wish I had no self at all like these guys do. And so, again, you, you, this, you caught me on a person. This is a personal thing for me. So I know I'm teaching out of my own personal heart here. And... I don't mean to ramble on about it, but I think you get my point here. This is all about love. And so, love you, love you, can't get enough of you. Appreciate it. About 16 minutes, it looks like, or 18. I can't quite read it. It's a little, a little furry, a little fuzzy, a little furry, a little fuzzy. Anyway, we're going right into Jonah right now. And hey, I didn't yawn once in the whole poem. Amazing. Woohoo! Anyway, love you, love you, can't get enough of you. We will talk to you later. Keep on with the love.